So we're back for another episode at Bonsai Science here. And today we're gonna to be doing our third installation of our growth and development series. So we're gonna be primarily talking now about our third stage, which is our refinement stage. So in refinement, we have already now set the movement in our primary trunk and our primary branches throughout the tree and developed those to the thickness that we want in both those structures. And then we moved on to the secondary stage of development and developed our secondary branches that came off of our primary branches. Now at this point, when we say we've entered that third stage or that stage of refinement um, and ramification, that's when we're starting to then develop now our tertiary branches and all that fine twigginess, the smaller leaves and such inside of those trees. Um, this is the stage where we really get to apply many of our um, growth management skills because we're constantly trying to have to redistribute the energy from stronger parts of the tree to the weaker parts and to also control the growth in a um, much more controlled manner um, through how we apply our fertilizers, how much we apply, how frequently we apply it, and even what kind we're going to be using. Um, this is a stage where we're going to try to create those shorter internode lengths and um, also develop then our pads and our junipers and some of our other trees and create that depth and movement as our eye travels up and throughout the tree. Um, this is that stage where now we're going to really employ a lot of those other techniques like decandling, needle plucking, complete defoliation of a tree, partial defoliation, lots of pruning back continuously to two buds and even grafting perhaps tighter foliage. Um, that's, all of that's going to come into play into this stage. Our pot selection and our soil selection also becomes much more important because as we're trying to refine and ramify our canopy, what we've talked about is what we're doing in that rooting system is a mirror image of what's going on above the tree. So this is where we want our smaller and shallower pots to really start coming into play. And we're really gonna be using that APL soil. Um, now reviewing back into the soil substrate lecture that we did, the role of the akadama is what really comes into play here. So that akadama is designed to break down to create then those very fine ramified root structures. Um, at this point, we haven't really found a alternative substrate that provides that root ramification for us in bonsai culture. Um, we have found substrates that we can replace for water holding and nutrient holding and oxygen spacing in the soil, but not a good alternative beyond Akadama for creating the ramification in the roots. Um, like I mentioned, our fertilization techniques are really going to shift and come into play, and that's going to be our next episode is going to be just focusing completely on um, fertilization types, chemical, organic, and the benefits and cons of those, and even going really deeply into that rise of fear and all the magic that's happening in the soil. Um, so let's talk about some of the techniques that we're going to be using for different specific tree types. Um, my dormant trees and the temperate trees, which is what we're going to be talking about, obviously it is February, they are still very deeply much in um, their dormancy stage. So I did grab a couple of the tropicals out just so we can look at a couple um, examples of techniques we would use that then cross over into some of our other material. Um, so first up, let's talk about our deciduous material. So our trees and shrubs that seasonally are going to shed their leaves, usually in the autumn, um, the best techniques that we'll use with these trees to develop that fine ramification in our tertiary branching. Um, pinching. So pinching now, when we talk about pinching, a lot of people don't do it correctly and they apply it wrong or to the wrong tree types. And this is very important. So when we're talking about pinching a deciduous tree, um, we're generally going to be using this on our maple varieties, our acers, our tridents. And Pinching really should only be done and always occur just in the spring on brand new growth. Um, the growth that hasn't developed or hardened into a cuticle yet. Um, so we're going to be pinching. We need to be watching our trees closely. So, and as our spring bud then starts to swell and that center stem starts to elongate from that bud, that's that time when after that first set of leaves appears, that we would be going in and taking our fingers and simply pitch it, pinching out um, that central stem. Otherwise, it's going to continue to elongate. <clears throat> so let's think about this. Why would we go in and pitch the 
primary part that first starts to elongate from our first two leaf structures. Now going back, what is that hormone that we've continuously talked about that controls the elongation and the apical dominance um, in many of our tree varieties? Oxen. So we're going to go in and we're going to pinch that soft new tender growth as it elongates out of that center stem. And now we have removed the oxen, which was suppressing the buds behind it. Um, and they are now cued to grow. And we keep then going in during the spring and revisiting the pinching technique. So at first we pinched that center stem here. We got our two leaves, center stem starts to elongate. We go in with our fingers, we pinch that, activates the buds behind it. Those start to push out, they push out. We get that first set of leaves. We can, can go in and we can pinch those. They might go out again on the sides and we can continuously then go in and pinch. Um, that might happen, you might go in three or four times through your spring season because not everything is going to swell and develop that elongating stem at the same time. So we really need to be watching our deciduous material for that to occur. Um, now, do we go in and pinch off all of our deciduous material? No. Again, the trees that we are primarily going to be pinching are going to be those that are um, our, our deciduous trees with the opposite bud formation. Um, so this is primarily, like I said, going to be our maple varieties and bonsai. Um, that's the main technique you're probably going to be using to develop that internal ramification and that tertiary growth. Um, so why shouldn't we use pinching with our species that have an alternating bud formation? Now, if you've grabbed any of your trees to look at them and kind of follow along if you think they're in this stage, Let's think about our deciduous trees that have an alternating bud structure. These would be like our Chinese elms. Now, as a whole, alternating bud structure deciduous material generally has a much tighter internode. Um, they're also generally going to have smaller leaves for most of our varieties. So we know that if we simply prune them back to two leaves after we let it run for six to eight leaves and start to harden off, that we will very reliably now get two more structures coming out of those two buds, which we can't reliably get without going in and pinching on our opposing bud formation deciduous trees, um, just because they are so oxen dominated in that tip. Their inner nodes are also usually generally a little bit longer if we don't go in and manage that energy. Um, now, a beech and some other alternating bud varieties can still be fairly apically dominated. So we might use pinching as a technique to help redistribute that. So if you have a beech tree and it's starting to get apically dominated at the top with that oxen hormone, it's going to cause our lower branches and our structure below the apex to weaken. So in the spring, not to develop the ramification, but to redistribute the energy, we'll go in maybe to the top of the beech and pinch the apical budding as it comes through that shoot so that we can redistribute the energy back down through the tree. Um, another technique that we're going to use in our deciduous material might be partial defoliation combined with pruning. So let's say you're working with a tree that has naturally very small leaves and an alternating bud formation like a Chinese elm. We don't need to defoliate or partially defoliate a Chinese elm. Their leaves are already extremely tiny. We don't need them to be smaller. We can simply prune back to two. We're going to reliably get those buds to activate and they already have a very small leaf pattern. But if you're looking at your tree and you're working with a species that has naturally much larger leaves, like a beech, or as I've been experimenting with out in our area here is some red oaks, those very large leaves have an increased surface area and a natural higher ability than of photosynthesizing on that leaf. If you take one beech leaf and compare it to one Chinese elm leaf, they are vastly different and their photosynthesizing capabilities are vastly different. So that Chinese elm, simply pruning back to those two leaves, it says, oh crap, I need to send out some more um, branches and get some more leaves going or I'm not going to be able to feed myself. Now, if we go in on a 
beech or as I discovered firsthand the maples, some of the, my maples, my sugar maples and my oaks this last year and simply prune them back to two leaves, they just are gonna kick back and say, I'm good. The le two leaves you left me, they're plenty big for me to get enough food for the size of my tree right now, but thank you. So what we have to do then is combine partial defoliation with pruning back in those species. And that's how we're gonna get our better ramification in those trees. So those alternating leaf pattern trees, like a beech, we're gonna cut those back to two leaves left, but then we have to go in and partially defoliate that leaf. So the magic number that most bonsai masters have decided upon is 70% leaf reduction. In order to reliably get them to activate buds behind that level, 70% leaf reduction is what they need to enter that, oh crap, I need to put out more stems, I need more leaves, or I'm not gonna be able to feed myself mode. Um, so quick review, deciduous material, opposing bud pattern, like most of our maples, we're gonna go in and pinch off spring growth right after it has started to elongate. It's still soft, it's still green, it's still fleshy. Um, it's only done in the spring. Alternating bud pattern, like a Chinese elm or a beech or anything else that we're looking at that has a alternating leaf pattern, we prune back to two active buds. We're gonna get more into that when we work with, I got quite a few um, Chinese elms and some other varieties that will be hands-on as they grow. We'll be pruning back to develop that tertiary structures and that ramification and that fine structure. Alternating bud pattern and a larger leaf variety. We're gonna prune back to two leaves, but we're also going to then partially defoliate by reducing that leaf surface by 70%. So then we can reliably get the activation of those buds that occur behind that level. Um, now, I did grab a couple of my tropicals just because they do have leaves and they are currently right now in a very active growth state, just so that we can take a look at what this means. So this is a melina, also known as a parrot's beak. It is in a very active stage of development and growth right now. Um, it just has its primary, stru stru primary trunk structure developed. So this is a tree that's very much still in its first stage of development. Um, it is just starting to develop where I want the primary branches and we're just trying to thicken those up and heal the large wound cut that was in the middle here. So if we go in, let's see if we can get this a little closer, and we look at some of this very new growth here. Let's see. I don't know if it will zoom in enough, maybe if we back it out. So if we look at these, this part here has already hardened off this is two new shoots here, and this is that very fleshy stem in the middle that is starting to elongate out of those. If I wanted to pinch this off for ramification, I would go in and simply, with my fingers, pinch off the central stem here to stop that elongation process. This is one that I'm going to be going in and pruning since it has just hardened off these leaves. So we're going to prune these back some just because it has turned quite wild and I have an exponential amount of growth on this little tree. This was from the Minnesota Bonsai Society um, fall, summer, July workshop that we did on uh, melinas and also primnas. So this is the melina that I had picked. So that's what we would do for pinching. Now, when we talk about our growth hardening off, I just brought my one of my rain trees up here and it went to sleep as soon as it got off. So we can see how light and tender this new growth is here. This has not hardened off yet, so I cannot go in and prune this back because if we go in and we're pruning too early before our central stem has started to harden off, it has not yet developed the phloem it needs to have set those buds to activate behind it. So 
if we are going to go in, we can see a definitive difference in the colors. When we talk about this and this has started to harden off, it's become more woody, it's a darker color. But at the tip here, it has not started to, it has not hardened off. So if I'm going to prune it back, I want to make sure I'm pruning it back to an area that's already hardened off. Otherwise, I am not going to get any back budding because the phloem hasn't matured to a stage where it has set any bugs in order to activate them. So that's those two. All right. Now, if we're going to be talking about our deciduous conifers, our deciduous conifers are going to be primarily in bonsai. There are bald cypress, um, our dawn redwoods, and our larch trees. Um, again, with those, we're simply going to be waiting for the growth to harden off, and then pruning is going to be our main technique. It's as simple as that to develop that ramification. These are trees, again, that if you want to keep the branch that you're pruning, if you're talking about a very young Dawn Redwood, you need to make sure that that has hardened off to where you're pruning it back to, or it has not set any buds. And that's going to be treated by that tree as a fall leaf, and it's just going to fall off in the fall then. Um, so if it's a structure you wanna keep as far as a branch, you need to wait for it to harden off before you prune it back. Then it has set the buds. It has decided it's going to be a branch or a stemming that's going to then continue through into the next season then hopefully. Um, so Dawn Redwood, Ball Cypress, we're gonna simply prune those back to our desired length once their growth has hardened off. Um, our larches, we wanna prune those back to that internode length that we're looking for. If you look at a larch, um, I don't have any personally right now in my collection. I do have one that will be arriving shortly. Um, but if you go over to Dave's Bonsai channel, I know he has quite a bit of larches that he's been working with that he's collected. Um, and you'll see him pruning and working with those and you can see how their buds are. Um, I know he collected quite a few this, I think it was just this last year. So he'll probably be working with those quite a bit this upcoming summer. Um, now, as far as our elongating species, these are going to be like our yews, our taxis, our spruce, even our cryptomerias. Um, so during the first and second stage on those trees, we simply pruned to develop. And now as we get into the tertiary ramification, we're going to be pinching those species also. So again, our yews, spruce, cryptomeria, we're just going to wait till that tip starts to elongate and then we're going to go in and remove that soft fleshy tip in the spring. Moving right along, we're going to jump into the an easy species. Um, my favorite, my favorite temperate species, I've got a bunch of them, um, and that's the junipers. So the junipers as a whole are great, and I love them because in the spring, you really don't want to be doing anything with them. Um, the junipers really get all of their strength and their energy from their foliage, and we can't go in in a, the ramification stage in the spring and just remove all their new foliage because we are going to drastically weaken that tree. And if we do that and repeat that year after year or multiple times throughout the season, um, that's going to be a tree that we're going to set up for fail failure. So the junipers really need to put out their new spring growth, let their spring growth harden off. And then later in the season, that's when we want to go in and we simply want to prune them back to their desired pad shape or the silhouette that we have been building. And that's after it's rejuvenated itself by pushing it all out. Um, that's how they get their strength. So in the spring, stay with your busy trees, work on your deciduous material, get in there pinching, do all your repotting stuff, but just let the junipers be, let them be in the spring. Um, our broadleaf evergreens and our pines, they're very, very busy also in the spring. 
have some popcorn. Some popcorn? Yeah. Well, I'll finish to get you some popcorn in a few minutes, okay? I want to be in your shoes. You want to say hi? Hi. What's your name? Emily. You're Emily. And I have lots of questions. You have lots of questions? Mm -hmm. Okay, what's your question? <sighs> hmm. What's your favorite tree type? Um, a, a sleepy tree. The sleepy tree? Me? Is the Brazilian rain tree, is that the one you call the sleeping tree? Mm -hmm. Yes, you think that one is the best tree because when it's nighttime and it goes to sleep, its leaves close up. And when it's raining, its leaves close up. And when it wakes up in the morning, it opens it all up with the sunshine. And that's why you love your sleepy tree. Okay, I'll get you popcorn. Let me be finish up here, okay? Okay. All right. So our spruce, as they start to elongate, what they're going to start doing is they're going to start, you'll see their, um, their buds or, and their trumpets there start to elongate also. We are only going to go in and pinch on those varieties if it's a trumpet that has pushed out well beyond the silhouette showing an extreme strength compared to the rest of those in that area. Um, so we don't go in and we're not going to be um, pinching every trumpet budding. Only the ones that are excessively stronger than the others that have pushed out beyond their silhouette. And on those budding trumpets, once those leaf, the um, needles have start to open up on that trumpet, it's too late. You cannot go in and pinch them at that point. You need to do it before that's occurred. If that has occurred, that's when we need to go in then and do that post-flush pruning after it's hardened off. Um, I'm not going to be going into the pines right now because to be honest, the pines are something I have not dived into to the degree that I would have wanted before I start telling people, how are we gonna manage our pines? Uh, myself, I just, I have a mugo pine and a red pine that I have just recently, this last fall added to my collection. Maybe the mugo was during the summer. And I am just starting to understand and work with both of those varieties. And there are so many nuances within our pines as to if it's a high elevation pine, a low elevation, a middle elevation, is it a multi-flush or a single flush pine? Um, and I'm still in that extreme learning stage when it comes to handling my pines. So pines might be something that we'll revisit as far as managing those, the growth and development as we are working through it. As I'm learning, um, I'll be sure to pass on that information. Um, I Right now it just seems really complicated in my head, so I know I'm not yet at that point where I can put that out there for anybody else that's wanting to learn about pines. But it's coming, don't worry, it'll be there. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Um, Next episode is we're going to be diving deep, so deep into fertilization. It's going to give you a headache. It it will. Um, fertilization and the rise of fear within the pot is really like one of my baby subjects that I have dived into. I've done tons of research. It's I have a background in microbiology, so it really feeds my soul and my brain, and I find it so interesting. So we can't talk, we couldn't talk about the fertilization until we, I, I knew everybody could identify the stage of development their tree is in and what the goal is in that development because we need to apply that during the fertilization. Because the point is, I don't want to be telling everybody, this is what you're going to do. This is what you're going to use. This is when you're going to apply it. Um, this is how you prune. I want to be giving you the educational tools so that you can critically think and apply it to each tree individually. So that as you grab one of your trees from your collection or you've been at the nursery and you picked a new tree up, you can look at that tree and you can be like, all right, this is the stage this tree is in. This is the vision I have for this tree. This is my goal for this season for this tree because it's in this stage. And this is the plan and this is what I'm going to do to help meet my goal with this tree for this season. And you can just keep applying that to every tree that you come into possession of. 
Um, and in the end, we're gonna get healthier trees. We're gonna be developing them faster and they're gonna be so much better because we're taking the time to learn that horticultural basic. Um, if we could focus more on the magic that's occurring in the pot, instead of always focusing what's on top here, we're gonna really go a long ways in developing much better, much better bonsai. Um, Cause that's where all this, the magic happens. It's, we'll be talking about microbes. Uh, we'll be talking about um, ways to feed microbes. We'll be talking about the roots and how the roots feed the microbes and how the microbes that are in that rhizosphere are gonna be different if we're talking about a conifer versus deciduous material. And then we'll be talking about why the fertilization matters, why we would be picking organic over a chemical fertilizer, uh, risks and benefits to each, how we're gonna apply it in any given situation, how frequently, how much. Um, so I'm really excited about that. After we work through that fertilization lecture, we're gonna start jumping in and working with some of our trees. So it is coming to be mid-February here. I have an azalea that I need to get repotted first. Um, so we will be doing an episode all about azalea basics and then jumping into doing that azalea repotting. Um, we have a couple projects planned with a couple Benjaminas um, and then that should get us probably to the end of April here. Oh, wait, it's not April yet. I meant February. Did I keep saying April? I meant February. So it's mid-February. We need to get that azalea repot out. I want to precurse that with doing an all about azaleas lecture. And then we need to, I need to jump in and do a couple Benjaminas. And after that, we should be able to start some of our other earlier deciduous material. We might do a couple of the tropicals in there. Um, just kind of buying time until we start waiting for those signs um, from our temperate species that it's time to start repotting those that need to be repotted. So that's it for today. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop them down below. If you have any comments, please leave them also. Um, I'm learning, learning, learning. So I'm always open to um, review new information, other information that other people may have. So um that's it. I think my toddler was paging me to make some popcorn. So you guys have a good night.